Hi, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video, we're putting CPU coolers to the test. We've bought some of the most popular options so that we can test them firsthand and make recommendations to you. This video will focus on the entry and mid-level options, and we've got a load of high-end air coolers that we've tested as well, so we'll do a separate video for those if you're looking to cool a more demanding CPU like a Ryzen 7, or an Intel i9 or i7 CPU. We've also purchased a few liquid all-in-one coolers that we'll be running through as well and producing a video showing you how to use those to best effect and which ones are going to be worth your money. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the entry-level coolers. How have we tested these coolers? Well, first of all, we simply fitted them according to manufacturer's instructions. You might think that fitting is a one-time deal and not that important, but if the instructions are good and the fitting process is easy, that means you're less likely to make a mistake and then have to spend time troubleshooting high temperatures or a non-functioning CPU cooler down the line. There's also a few fitting issues and compatibility gotchas that you don't often hear about, so we'll point them out to you as we go along. We're in the process of making how-to install videos for both AMD and Intel for each of these coolers, so you can refer back to them. We've tested them all out, subjecting them to an all-core workload, keeping the rest of the system the same. This is only really to examine how the coolers perform at stock settings, and give an opinion on fan noise and thermal performance. There are other channels and reviews where thermals are given a much more in-depth treatment, but we felt they often overlooked other aspects of a CPU cooler like compatibility, ease of fitment, and overall quality of supplied hardware and accessories. Ultimately, if you fit these coolers to a case with decent airflow, and don't expect a low-tier cooler to handle a demanding CPU, they will cope with the CPUs we recommend absolutely fine. As long as the cooler has some headroom, you can modify the fan behaviour in BIOS, making sure that the balance of noise and thermal performance is to your liking. And of course, default motherboard behaviour will modify the way these coolers operate too, so take my data as an indication of performance, not as the only metric to decide which cooler is best. Here are the coolers we've got on test. Let's start out with the supplied AMD and Intel coolers, and if the budget is tight, they're supplied in the box, so why not use them? We'll see if they're a viable option for your build. Then we've got a couple of entry-level aftermarket coolers, the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim and the Arctic Freezer 7X. Both are available at around $20 to $25. These smaller coolers use a 92mm fan and a tower design with heat pipes, but are they up to the task? Stepping up to the mid-range, we've tested two coolers with four heat pipes and 120mm fans. There's the Hyper 212 Evo V2, a venerable design that's now gone through a number of revisions. So we were interested in seeing if it can still keep up. And a newer option is the ID Cooling SE224 XT. We're testing the RGB version here, but there's simpler versions to suit more modest budgets. Can it offer everything over the established option? First up, here are the standard AMD and Intel coolers. The Wraith Stealth here is an AMD supplied design. It uses a solid extruded aluminium heatsink and a downdraft fan to blow air across it. It has long been held as acceptable for the Ryzen 3600, and despite minor revisions, that hasn't really changed. The fitment is relatively simple. You just remove the hooked brackets on the motherboard and screw the cooler down into the backplate that's supplied on all AMD AM4 motherboards. Thermal paste is pre-applied. Performance is unremarkable, with relatively high temperatures under load, and the main downside is a relatively intrusive fan noise as the fan speed rises. Please note that we haven't included it on our graphs. It's not fair to do so, as the rest of the tests were conducted with an i5-11500, which draws more power than a Ryzen 3600. This cooler offers a great value option if you're trying to build a PC on a budget, but there are better options in terms of noise and thermal performance. We do consider an even a basic upgrade a good value way to improve the performance and quality of your PC. It's an option to keep costs down, and it's easy to fit a replacement later if you want to get the maximum for your money on day one of the build. You could also look for someone selling a Wraith Prism that's unwanted from a Ryzen 7 CPU. They include heat pipes and perform well as a cheap option. Overall, we can't complain about the Wraith Stealth, it's an adequate and comes bundled with the CPU. What we can complain about is the standard Intel cooler. It's been updated for Rocket Lake with black plastic and a copper core to try and aid heat dissipation. However, it's still not up to the task, even on an entry-level i5 CPU. This is really down to Intel's less efficient CPU design, with even i5s drawing and thus dissipating more than 100 watts. In our 10-minute all-core test, Temperatures on an i5-11500 quickly rose past 95 degrees Celsius, and thermal throttling resulted. And that's on an open test bench. It'll perform worse in a case. The other issue is noise. The small fan spins fast, 3500 RPM, and it makes an unpleasant and intrusive tone. This cooler simply isn't up to the job, and in all but the most basic i3 office PCs, we'd recommend that you upgrade it. So let's look at some of the better coolers in this test. The Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim is a diminutive cooler with three heat pipes and a 92mm fan. For the price, overall quality is pretty decent, with the brushed aluminium top plate making it look more expensive than it is. Fitting on Intel involves screwing in two brackets that then rely on plastic through pins to locate it on the motherboard. It's fiddly and frustrating locating these, and the instructions aren't great. 
they need to clip down, and applying the necessary force whilst holding the cooler in place isn't easy. It's secure enough once fixed. On AMD, installation is far easier, using the standard AMD fitting brackets and a retention bar to hold it in place. There's no clearance issues for RAM, and it'll fit in most small cases thanks to its low 125mm height. Performance is acceptable overall, with temperatures on our i5-11500 levelling out at 80 degrees Celsius on an all-core load. Be Quiet have clearly tuned the cooler for lower noise and accepted higher temperatures as the trade-off. The fan, despite being small, doesn't get intrusive and stays at about 1900 RPM. It's acceptable for a Ryzen 3600 or the more powerful Ryzen 5600X or the Intel i5-11400 to push. Note that on AMD it can only fit with the fan oriented up-down, so aesthetically that may not be to your liking. On Intel it can be fitted either way thanks to the square mount holes. It's a decent option and represents good value at around $20. We selected the Arctic 7X as a competitor thanks to its identical price point around $20 and the fact it also uses a 92mm fan. This cooler has just two heat pipes and a shrouded 92mm fan. The first surprise was that it wouldn't fit to our test bench Intel B560 motherboard, the Asus Tough. The spring retainer is fixed to the cooler and interferes with heat sinking around the CPU and even the M.2 heatsink. It's clearly been designed with AMD in mind. The plastic fitting ring is pretty flimsy and uses push pin fitment, and it performed acceptably well with relatively low noise and good thermal performance. What isn't acceptable is our support query to Arctic about the fitting issues going unresponded to for over a week, and no obvious compatibility warnings or lists on the Arctic website. In short, we can only recommend this uh, cooler for use on AMD motherboards, because it may not fit on Intel motherboards with good VRM heat sinking, and that's something you should absolutely be looking for if you're getting a B460 or B560 motherboard. Moving up into the heated mid-range section, these are coolers with four heat pipes generally and 120mm fans, costing around $35 to $40. The Cooler Master Hyper 212 has dominated this market for many years, and it's almost a de facto option. However, it's a little more expensive, trending towards $40, and despite design revisions, has it really kept up? First, for good. It's supplied with fitting kits for a multitude of sockets, making it versatile. However, that's also part of its shortcomings, with a confusing Intel fitting process involving pegs and clips that have to be correctly positioned, and the plastic back plate leaves the brackets feeling somewhat insecure until braced by the cooler itself. The instructions also advise applying thermal paste early in the process, a surefire way to get it spread around your motherboard as you fiddle around fitting the rest of the hardware. Once fitted, performance is unremarkable, in a good way. It cools acceptably well, keeping the temperatures in the mid-60s in our test. It doesn't make any undue noise with fan speed staying low at 1200 RPM. It's just a little uninspiring overall. I think Cooler Master would definitely benefit from dropping compatibility for older sockets and simplifying the mounting solution for a better all-round experience. The Hyper 212 works well enough, but it's showing its age and suffers from trying to cover too many bases in a single package. The alternative is the ID Cooling SE224 XT. It's also a four heat pipe cooler with 120mm PWM fan. However, it's clear that ID Cooling have really thought this product through whilst prioritising the value on offer. First, let's be charitable and say they've been inspired by Noctua's mounting method. This is a simple, secure and high quality mounting system. Then there's a sheer range of accessories provided with this RGB enabled cooler. There's an RGB splitter, RGB fan, RGB shroud on the cooler core itself, and even a standalone SATA-powered RGB controller module if you don't or can't use the motherboard RGB headers. There's also a generous tube of thermal paste and brackets for an additional fan which isn't supplied. Fitting is only complicated by hooking up the RGB elements and the additional cable management that entails, otherwise it's straightforward. Performance is identical to the Hyper 212, with good temperatures under load and no undue noise. It's the value proposition of this cooler that really impresses us in the mid-range. There's a number of models, from basic no-frills version up to the RGB-enabled one, to fit any budget or build. If you want a decent mid-range cooler for the Ryzen 5600X or i5-11400, this cooler takes our recommendation with ease. It's a great option. If we just take a quick look at the data I logged during my testing of these, just to give an impression of their overall performance, you can see, first of all, that the Intel stock cooler clearly has thermal issues. It hits 95 degrees C and throttles the CPU. This is the unacceptable performance of this cooler on the CPU it is supplied with. You can see that the Be Quiet is next on the list. It hits 80 degrees C on an all-core load. That's acceptable, the CPU isn't throttling. It's clear that Be Quiet, in keeping with their name, have prioritised low noise operation over ultimate temperatures. Finally, you can see that the other three coolers perform very closely. The ID Cooling SE224, the Hyper 212, and the Arctic 7X all maintain temperatures of around 66 to 68 degrees Celsius. Looking on to fan speeds, you can see that they tally with fan size. The Intel not only runs hot, but loud as well, with its fan hitting 3400 RPM, the maximum speed for this fan. It still can't cool the CPU adequately. It's incredibly loud whilst doing this. The 92mm options, 
The Arctic 7X holds its fan speed just above 2000 RPM around 2100, whilst the Be Quiet just below at about 1900 RPM. It's definitely the slightly quieter of the two fans, but you've seen before, the thermal performance doesn't quite match the Arctic 7X. Both operate reasonably on CPUs with a 65W TDP. Finally, you can see that both of the 120mm fan options sit at 1200 RPM, and this keeps noise down to a minimum. The larger fan is clearly an advantage driving more air through the cooler at lower speeds and maintaining lower temperatures and lower noise. These metrics demonstrate why we'd recommend if it's at all possible you go for the largest tower cooler you can afford. A 120mm fan does offer significant benefits in noise and thermals over the cheaper options. Our recommendation in this test goes then to the ID Cooling SE224. It's an excellent blend of value with the quality of the supplied components and its performance in both noise and thermals. It's all the cooler you need for a mid-range build using a CPU like the Ryzen 3600, Ryzen 5600X or the Intel i5 11400 or 11500. You'll have a great time using this CPU cooler. Um, it comes in a range of options as well, which I think is great. You can get a basic option if you want to keep costs down, or the RGB option is good if you want to integrate into the rest of the RGB in your build. Other options not in this test? Well, whilst I'm always hesitant to suggest products I haven't personally tested, it may be that these coolers aren't available or are overpriced where you are. At under $50 for a tower cooler, we'd recommend you look at the Scythe Mugen 5 Rev B, a chunky six heat pipe tower cooler with a great reputation. There's also the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 and the Noctua NHU12S Redux. Any of these coolers are capable of handling an i5 or Ryzen 5 CPU without undue temperatures or noise, so take a look at them. So that concludes our entry level and mid-range cooler roundup. If you're looking to cool a more demanding CPU like a Ryzen 7 CPU or an Intel i7 or any of the K-series CPUs, we've got our high-end cooler roundup, which I'm producing right now and will be live same time as this video, so take a look at that if you want something with even more cooling performance or lower noise. Please also do check out the companion article over at premiumbuilds.com where I've got a little bit more information about these coolers. There's also a wealth of information about component selections, part choices, and advice to help you build the best possible PC. So check out premiumbuilds.com.